database as a service on AWS cloud. So this video is to give you an overall idea of what are all the cloud-based database services and data related services available on AWS for various needs of your business problem or application needs. So with that, we can go through this list very quickly and I will give you a couple of points for each of these service, what it is and when you can use it or any of the important characteristic associated with it, right? So what are all the Amazon cloud-based database services available at the moment? So first thing is AWS DynamoDB. Recently, NoSQL has gained very wide popularity because of the data structures that the data format that it's being generated and it's being, being processed by various organizations. So the NoSQL has gained wide popularity. NoSQL databases like MongoDB or Cassandra or you know, a, a, anything else that you can think of, right? So AWS thought of such a, a use case and decided to put that as a service in the cloud. So if you have any application you know writing or reading unstructured data from the NoSQL database AWS DynamoDB is one of the choice right other advantages in the AWS cloud for DynamoDB is it is low latency based and it uses SSD storage so the IOPS was like very high compared to normal, you know, IOPS that you can um, you can actually see in any other model, right? So we will not go in depth of DynamoDB. So the short message is: if you have a use case where you want to be able to use NoSQL as a service from the cloud, and if your cloud is AWS. DynamoDB may be the choice, right? Let's go to the second one, AWS RDS. Relational database service is actually encapsulating the traditional RDBMS servers, RDBMS databases as a service and, you know, and it's hosted in AWS cloud. So if your application is using or needs any traditional RDBMS and that has to be accessed from a cloud as a service, then AWS or DS is a choice, right? It doesn't mean that your existing application which is using RDS has to be using this in the cloud you can actually port if you are migrating your current application from managed deployment to the cloud deployment or to the hosted deployment in AWS environment. So what you can do is you can actually move your application to a computing you know, service like an Amazon EC2, EC2 is a compute service available in AWS cloud, right? And S3 for storage simple you know storage as a service so s3 these are very popular for a standalone application and a simple database so if you have a, if you have an application which is already using mysql and some compute application you can just move it that way but the advantage with this is with this rds is that you don't have to set up manage operate database tuning performance backup all of that, I mean, high availability, how do you make it reliably available in the, you know, cloud, all of that is taken care by AWS. So it lets you focus on writing the business application and then forget about your database needs, right? You just have to make use of this database available in the cloud. So that's an advantage of RDS. The next one is AWS Elastic Cache. 
caching is very important with respect to many of the web based applications right and this is especially an in memory caching so aws elastic cache has two different options for you when you want to use this or when you create this service so either you can go with memcached or redis so both are supported memcached is actually a very popular object system so if your application is currently using memcached when you move your application to the cloud and your application is going to seamlessly work with elastic cache because memcached is a protocol compliant and less work for you as well right on the other hand redis is an open source you know key value pair data data store this can provide some structured uh, you know uh, uh, data structures or I, I would say sorry i would say shorter list and stores right so you can actually uh, based on your application needs you can go with either memcached or redis right next one is aws redshift so redshift is um, a data warehousing solution from aws cloud so in many situations you want to you know store all your data or you want to be able to have all your data uh, in one place um, that if if that place is an aws cloud then you you would consider uh, redshift because it's it's compliant with um, uh, you know a, a sql so you can actually use uh, jdbc and odbc drivers to custom jdbc and odbc drivers to connect to uh, sql based uh, databases and also it uses the columnar approach right to you know to uh, parallelize the queries which which goes to multiple nodes simultaneously and gets the results so that's how it achieves the high speed and um, it can scale up to petabyte or more so that's the power of redshift and if you have such a requirement in the cloud you might consider redshift the next one is very uh, interesting one uh, where the database migration service is also available in the uh, aws cloud so what that means is that if you have your data stored in mysql database and uh, because of your you know application upgrade or various uh, reasons you, you want to move that data from mysql database to the oracle database or from oracle to postgres or from postgres to um, microsoft sql server any of these data movement data migration from one database to the other can also be done in the cloud right that's with a minimal uh, downtime and you don't have to worry about doing all of this you know yourself you can just um, do it in the cloud with a few clicks and uh, what about aws kinesis a kinesis is actually a solution where um, a solution in the cloud how to capture the streaming data into the cloud and further to your application and how does your application access this uh, you know streaming data in the cloud so you might be doing any analytics application or any other business intelligence or you you want to use your own basic bi tools to you know uh, do the analytics so kinesis is a solution uh, kinesis actually uh, captures the data from various sources to the um, a component called firehose inside the uh, aws the firehose actually you know receives the data and stores them onto an s3 and uh, aws redshift okay so this data is put in, in these two and then your application can directly take the data from these two components using sql or you can actually use uh, you can use uh, a hadoop Hadoop cluster to process this data, or you can you know do uh, anything with this data because your application can access it you know uh, without having any other dependency. All right. So the last one is AWS Elastic MapReduce. Uh, 
So this is nothing but a hosted Hadoop cluster on AWS. So people who are experienced or familiar with setting up the Hadoop cluster in the managed services will understand the complexity and, and the necessary requirements to be taken care while setting up the cluster. You know, uh, they will easily understand how easy it is to use this in a, you know, predefined setup, elastic map reduce, and it can, you know, it can grow according to your data. I mean, you can configure it that way. So that's the reason it is actually called elastic map reduce. You can actually increase the uh, cluster size to, uh, you know, a level according to the requirement. So these are all the database related services and database as a service uh, in the AWS cloud. Um, let me come back with few more videos on uh, compute and network and you know storage, how that is being delivered from AWS. And thanks for watching my video. And if you like my video, please subscribe. I will come back with more relevant video on these topics. Thanks again. Bye.